So we bought a Graph watch as one of our first watches in our watch trading journey, and Graph is a very special jewelry and now watch brand. Not a lot of people talk about it, so let me give you a little insight on it. The Graph brand has been synonymous with the highest quality jewelry, gems, and diamonds that money can buy since 1960. The company was started by one single man, Lawrence Graph, when he was 22 years of age. Any great collector, whether it's a collector of art or a collector of stones, buys them because he truly loves them. He wants them in his collection. And I think history has proved that if you buy the best of anything, it's going to be a good investment. And incidentally, to buy the best, it's always the highest price. This was after he dropped out of high school at 14 years of age and was scrubbing toilets as a jeweler's apprentice. I started in a very humble way. I started sitting at the bench, learning to be a jeweler, using my hands, making jewelry. And I had a lot of confidence. I always felt that I was born to be amongst these stones. Now with his multiple different businesses, his net worth nears about $11 billion, and his contemporary art collection alone is valued at about $600 million today. Lawrence Graf and Graf in general is one of the head purveyors of sourcing some of the highest quality gems and diamonds you will ever see in the world. He is extremely infatuated with rare diamonds, especially fancy intense pink ones, which are inarguably some of the rarest stones in the world. And once this limited resource is gone, it's gone. Mr. Graf seems to want to have all the pink diamonds he lays his eyes on. Odds are, if there's a fancy intense pink diamond going up for auction with significant size, Graf is walking away with it. So Graf's been one of the most high-end jewelry and diamond companies on the planet since the 1960s. How long have they been doing watches? Well, they're relatively new to watches. They've been doing watches for about 10 or so years. They maybe started about 2010, maybe a little bit later, but that doesn't mean that they don't already have an incredibly impressive collection of watches at their disposal already. Lawrence Graf has one of the most insane and impressive collections of incredibly rare, fancy, intense colored diamonds of blues pinks greens incredible stuff he goes to auction houses all the time he wins all of them and he's got some of the most incredible collections of all of the rarest stuff and the best stuff in the world and because of that in 2014 graf was able to create the most expensive watch to date and it's incredible In 2014, Graf made the most expensive watch in the entire world. At valued at over $55 million, this has an ensemble of colored diamonds like you've never seen that you may not be able to see again and may not be able to replicate ever again, which is incredible. It's called the Hallucination Watch and it has over 110 fancy intense colored diamonds valued at over $55 million and it's not to be sold to anybody. It's in Lawrence Graf's personal collection. So technically it's not the most expensive watch ever sold because it was never sold, but it is the most expensive and valuable watch that we know in existence today. To put into perspective how rare the pink diamonds are that Graf is winning at auction houses and putting in his watch, Jacob & Co just did another billionaire watch. This time it's $20 million and it's full of canary yellow diamonds. Incredible watch. If you were to pay any money imaginable, $100 million, $200 million, whatever, you still wouldn't be able to find enough pink diamonds on this earth to be able to make one of those Jacob & Co billionaire watches with pink diamonds. So you know how I was talking about Graf loving to go to auction houses and buy very expensive rare diamonds, especially like pink diamonds and stuff like that? Well, here's a great example of it. Back in 2010, Graf bought the most expensive pink diamond in the world, the most flawless and most intense, one of the biggest pink diamonds. This was almost a 25 carat emerald cut pink diamond that by the way, he altered slightly after purchasing it, which was an incredible process by itself to make it even more perfect in a very natural way, which is an incredibly hard thing to do. I may make an entire video just on that process, and it's an incredible thing. It's quite a meticulous job. You over-polish and you overdo things just for the certificate. You might polish for days a little blemish which no one would ever see, and which is often very difficult to see even under a magnifying glass. But it's there, 
scientifically it's got to come out to get the flawless certificate and we have to do all little adjustments. This was one of the first times that's ever happened to a stone of that caliber. Almost 25 carats valued at over $46 million and this made it the most expensive diamond in the world at that time. When you finally get the collection together and you see this array of diamonds, you see the beauty and the life and the shapes. It's so exciting. So even though Graf is relatively new to the watch game, they came out swinging when they first started. They came out with the first ever three-dimensional moon phase with the double axis tourbillon attached to it, which is pretty cool, pretty cool watch creating stuff. You know, I would say that's up there with some of the big dogs in the watch industry. And even, you know, what you would expect from them, they got some incredible gem setting, their diamonds are impeccable, and the jewelry side of making of those watches are just top shelf, which is what you would expect from one of the best jewelry companies on the planet. They also had an aventurine dial in the background in combination with some of the animals that they were making on these specific ones. The aventurine dial is a type of stone and it's meant to symbolize some stars in the back of these animals. The aventurine dial has a nice little effect to it that has some glistens and sparkles like stars do. Uh, it gives a whole nice effect to the watch and it also goes well with the three-dimensional moon that they created. It all goes together really well. Very very cohesive so it makes a whole lot of sense it's an art piece it's a cohesive it all goes together kind of tells a story a little bit with some of their stuff they do some stuff with cars they do some stuff with animals also part of graphs more high-end collections they also came out with the graph master graph which is a limited edition minute repeater tourbillon all invisibly set with the highest quality white diamonds you can buy made in 2013 which is relatively soon after they started this whole watch thing just an impressive thing to do right after you start getting into the watch game oh what's what's a, one of the first things that we're gonna make we're gonna make an entirely chandeliered case invisibly set diamond thing which is you know kind of what we're known for but we're also gonna make it a minute repeater with a tourbillon and we're gonna visibly set everything incredible stuff incredible stuff so they do some really impressive stuff um, not a lot of people talk about graph too much with watches and stuff like that. At least I see uh, graph with jewelry in the high-end jewelry world. They're hot shit. So like top three, um, you know, globally recognized top shelf jewelry companies, right? But in the watch world, not a lot of respect is thrown on their names. You know, this is an interesting thing. Not a lot of people talk about it too much here on the tubes. And I thought I'd cover it a little bit, throwing a little bit of respect on Graf's name and showing you a little bit of something that you don't really see most of the time. And we're going to be covering some interesting things. I'm also going to throw this in here at the end. I don't really know. I, I'm not not able to like I don't have a picture or a video of it right now I'm gonna have to dig through it to find it again but there was some cool stuff that we were offered for the graph in like trade and stuff we didn't take these offers but these were just some jewelry you know people some friends in the industry and stuff like that who are interested in the watch and who wanted to trade some stuff that was in their inventory and in their shop for the graph we didn't take this trade but I thought it was kind of an interesting one there was one that was a blue sapphire bracelet I believe and um, white diamonds as well and I believe every single stone on it was a half a carat each either a quarter carat or a half a carat um, that's a big difference in stones by the way that's a large difference in bracelet sizing of stones right in any stones a quarter carat to a half a carat is like a decent amount of change there and it uh, affects the price significantly it's especially when you have multiple stones in a whole bracelet in the tennis chain style bracelet so you know it affects the price pretty uh, drastically so I feel like I should remember that but it's been a while ago and I don't even have the pictures to look at it right now and it had a weird um, little sequence going on I think it was either like two um, sapphires and then a diamond or two diamond no I think it was two sapphires and then a diamond afterwards um, but I think if it was more diamonds than the sapphire we we would have taken the deal because it was half carat each stone um the stones were not small they were like pretty significantly big stones so that was good for that piece but to be honest with you it's kind of
kind of a short bracelet. I think it was like seven inch bracelet. Um, majority of that is like women's sizes and stuff. And I just don't think we really had the clientele to be able to move the piece at the most efficient price point there. Cause that's what you kind of need to think, right? Like if you don't have the clientele for a certain uh, type of product, then you're either going to a be stuck with it and not be able to sell it, or you're going to have to move it at a significantly lower price point because you don't have anybody to sell it to. Right. Um, and you just need to kind of offload it or whatever. That's not what you want to do. Um, I, if you're, if you're selling something and if you're in business, right? Like if the, that shouldn't be a, a shocking revelation, right? That shouldn't be a crazy thing. Oh, we want to have a certain clientele for this. The clientele we know and is in need of this or whatever, wants it or whatever, we can supply it. And because they like it and because we have this niche of people that we know, we're able to move it for decent prices that we are able to make a profit on and not a loss on. That's how uh, hopefully efficient businesses worked, right? Trying to reach out to people that we knew kind of clients that we kind of roll with and stuff like that. And we figured, hey, we don't really have the clientele for this bracelet. We can't really move it as efficiently as we could, maybe the graph watch. So we decided to keep the graph watch and not play with the bracelet gang. We didn't pass on it because it was a like a terrible offer. It was cool. It was a cool piece. And I feel, feel like it was uh, worth talking about and worth going over. It's just a very niche market of people that are looking for this type of bracelet and this thing in the price point that it's at. Um, so I'll pop it up on the on the screen. I'll show you in text or whatever what it actually is. If I was right about the half carat, or if I was you know right about the quarter carat, I thought it was half, but I could just be lying to myself. 